start it with the top 10 prospect list. All right, here we are with book number 10. Here we go. Uh, this is She-Hulk number one, third print. Um, so uh, She-Hulk is obviously getting her own TV show on Disney+. Plus. Um, this third printing um, is exceptionally rare. Um, the uh, the show has been heavily rumored to be based on this run. Um, you know this this book is particularly appealing. Um, you know, given its scarcity, um, you can identify it with the green bar at the bottom. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I think this is something you'd probably want to be picking up for your collection. Um, she it's going to be a big hit. And there's no question about it. And um, uh, this book is pretty tough to come by if you can find it. It's going right now for 40 to 50. I don't think it'll stay in that area very long, given given the limited number of them available. All right, at number nine, we have Skull Digger, the number, issue one, the one in 10. Steve, what did you have for us on this? So this is Mel's pick, and I was so happy to see this on the list. Uh, as viewers know, I'm a big Black Hammer fan, but you don't need to know anything about the Black Hammer universe. You don't, haven't, you don't, uh, need to have read Black Hammer. This is the first appearance of the, the title characters, Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy. Skeleton Boy has a Batman-like origin, and Skull Digger, if you want to think about him like the Punisher, th this is a guy that beats criminals to death with a metal skull tied to a chain. Um, and it, So this is kind of like, what if the Punisher had a kid sidekick? So the Black Hammer <laughs> universe... Um, it has a film and TV development deal with Legendary Entertainment. And that doesn't just include Black Hammer. It includes all the associated titles like this one. And what they publicized is it opens the door to create a cross-platform film and television shared universe. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they did this first and then did the first Black Hammer series afterwards because this is more easily adaptable the Black Hammer series is more supernatural. This is more street level crime fighting. It reminds me of maybe a, I, I know I said Punisher, but maybe also a, um, uh, a, a kick ass hit girl uh, type, type deal. They also signed up a licensing agent for all categories of this, this property. So there could be Black Hammer, Skeleton Digger, you know, toys, games. Uh, the company that is that won uh, the the rights to be the licensing agent, they also rep Bill and Ted and Dragon Ball. So these are these are some major players. Uh, as far as the numbers go, there were 13.7k copies of both covers. There's an A and B. This cover that Mel picked is the one in ten. Um, but it's not just a plain one in 10 cover. It's an FOC incentive ratio cover. So what that meant was that they announced it on um, November 11th, uh, 2019. They announced that this was going to be an FOC incentive, uh, one in 10. Um, and FOC ended on the 25th. So there was only a six day period for retailers to decide to order more than 10 copies and then also order copies of this. And if you think about those dates, November 19th, November 25th, around Black Friday, around Thanksgiving, retailers are were very busy. Uh, so I, even though oh. you can do 13.7 copies and divide it by 10 and say, hey, there's over a thousand copies of this, I doubt it. Oh, and by the way, the, uh, the, co the uh, copies, they were fully returnable as well. So there's another. So I, I just love this pick. It's uh, it's it's actually hard to find, but I, I bet it's hanging out in some some bin somewhere. Cool. Let's go to number eight. So this is Mighty Avengers issue one, the one in fifty, and I believe this is also a Mighty Mel V pick. Ben, what do you got for this? Yeah. So um, this is playing on Wandavision, um, Monica Rambeau. This is her first appearance as Spectrum. Um, uh, this has been some speculation on sort of what form she's going to take on in MCU. 
I think a lot of people are um, betting on Photon, but this is her as Spectrum. Uh, this book has a, um, really taken off in price. Um, it's one in 50. It's difficult to come by. Um, but given the success of WandaVision and uh, Monica's character in particular, uh, this book has become hugely sought after and uh, could continue to run uh, depending on Monica's path uh, within the MCU. Uh, but a smart pick and, and one that could get away from you if you don't jump on it quickly. All right. For number seven, we have Champions Issue 1. This is the cover A. Steve, what do you got for this? Yeah, so this was my pick. So Young Avengers, Young Avengers, Young Avengers. You know, hear it like it's Marsha, 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 right? So that's all we hear about, Young Avengers. <laughs> but we don't hear champions, champions, champions. Um, we could talk all day about the MCU possibilities and whether it's mutually exclusive to the Young Avengers. Can you have the champions and, and can you have the Young Avengers and how the lineup would be possible because, you know, you've got – young Cyclops on here and you've got Miles, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna bring you numbers and statistics. So first number is it's been five years since, since the release of this book. And that's even though there were 328K copies, it was the, num I believe number two in unit sales and number one in dollar sales for the month. But it, after five years, it's been enough time for those copies to disperse and deplete. Now, th there are a number of variants for this. Matter of fact, there's 50 different variants for this. Um, and a lot of them, well, I'll say a, quite a few, and I, I think Ben will touch on this in a minute, are, are not cheap. This one is cheap. And guess what? There's only 34 9.8s on the census. While if you look at some of those other variants, like JTC, 91 copies or the Ross 83 copies um, seven 9.8s have sold in eBay auctions this month alone. Now they're all from the same seller, but they all have different serial numbers. Um, on February 4th, the first one sold for 123 bucks plus shipping. And then the most expensive one so far has been 167 plus shipping. Um, so this is a book that you can still pick up really cheap. I purposely didn't pick the second print or any of the, the variants. Um, this is the cheap play. This is the play that, that I like. I'd rather pick this up than some of the other uh, variants. Um, the other thing I like about this is there's not much room for debate on the first formation of the group or the first use of the name in modern comics. I know there's a, a Bronze Age champions, but the hashtag champions goes for all viral by the end of the issue they call themselves the champions case closed ben you got yeah. anything to add yeah i mean first of all anybody who knows me knows how much i love this team love this book um this is the entry level um play on this book no question it can still be had for cover or less almost anywhere so from that perspective absolutely i love this cover there's a couple of really good opportunities in this um, the second print, um, um, which was largely distributed only through Walmart packs because nobody needed more copies of this. It was fairly heavily ordered. It can only really be distinguished by the blue C um, rather than the gold C that you're seeing here. So I'm a big, big fan of that second print. Um, super short printed, uh, a, a very special book. Um, the Alex Ross, which... Um, which Steve touched on with the, with them burning their Avengers cards is, in my opinion, a modern uh, masterpiece, um, a wonderful book. Um, and then the other one that kind of falls through the cracks is there's a one port per store retailer variant, which is sort of a half sketch of what we're looking at right now, right. Um, um, which is a beautiful, beautiful book. And sometimes just kind of gets lost in there. People don't realize what it is. So you can find those sometimes for, for really attractive prices because sort of from the top half down, it looks just like what we're looking at right now. Um, but no matter which book we're talking about here, um, this team is super important. If you look what Marvel is doing, this team is central um, to the future of Marvel Comics and, and, a, and a book 
um, that I think anybody should want in their collection. Steve, awesome pick. Love it. Thanks. All right. For, for number six, we have uh, X-Women, number one, the one shot. Okay. So uh, this was another one of my picks. Uh, this is a book that you can get under $15 raw. Now, here's the solicitation from back in 2010. Go on a high-flying, death-defying, globe-trotting adventure with your favorite X-Ladies, Storm, Psylocke, Shadowcat, Marvel Girl, and Rogue. Save the world and look great doing it. Today, this would not fly. It's a decade later. Um, this is a total you know, cheesecake issue from cover to back cover and in between. Now, uh, Milo uh, Monera does a tasteful cover. It's a pretty tasteful cover. And if you've seen some of his other work, um, but if you look in the interiors, there's a lot of skimpy outfits to be seen. Um, and one one thing I'll add before I go into why is Batgirl 12 up on the screen as well. This does include a preview of Shadowland, uh, which could be a future MCU event. Uh, once the Netflix IP is rolled or rebooted into the MCU. As for why Batgirl 12 is up on the screen. So the month that this book was released is the same month that Batgirl 12 was released. This had a less than 30K estimated units, which was only a, a few more than the Batgirl number 12, which is an art germ cover. Um, the Batgirl art germ sells for over $50 raw. And although I realize art germ may be more popular and prolific, um, I have a feeling that Men Menara will get his, his due one day. Uh, I think the gap's gonna close on these two books. Uh, even in nine, eight, this, this book sells for less than 200. Whereas um, Batgirl ha uh, has stronger price support. It rarely dips below 150. Um, one final thought on this, it's a long shot, but crazier things have happened. People spec on A-Force all the time. So would they ever spec on X-Women on the title alone? And yes, I do know there was an X-Men all-female series in 2013. But that aside, just the title, uh, X-Women, you never know. Yeah, you know, I would say one thing on Manera, He was super hot up until... Uh, the Spider-Woman cover, which kind of sort of put a lid on him, um, um, which limited the number of books um, um, that, that he produced. So I think these are all hyper-collectible and things you should be grabbing for your collection right now. This book is criminally undervalued, given how cool it is. Um, Steve, another great pick. Well done. For number five, we have Young Avengers number one, the director's cut. Ben, what do you have for this? All right, so anybody uh, who follows me knows how um, how bullish I am on this book. A couple of quick points. Um, the first print um, had about 100,000 or more copies, so fairly heavily printed. Um, this book, retailers ordered about 18,000. Um, you know, this book is the modern New Mutants 98. It's the modern... Uh, giant size X Men. Um, you know the number of characters that are going to come out of this book, um, and that we're going to see in the future of the MCU is enormous. Um, on this list, we have um, a cap of books no more than a hundred dollars. I put this book on the list because you can get it right now for just under a hundred. I don't think that's going to be the case going forward. So this was the last opportunity to get this book on the list. Um, um, if you like Cake Bishop, if you like Patriot, um, um, you know this book is um, uh, is a must-have, um, uh, and uh, it, it's one that's starting to disappear. Uh, I would grab this right now. You know, you can throw fifty bucks at you know the hot trash that came out this week. This is going to cost you a hundred. Um, you're much better um, served putting your money towards something like this than whatever sort of the hot whatever on the on, on the other hot 10 list that came out uh this book is going to hold its value over time in my opinion something you're going to be very happy you had in your collection all right thank you very much and for book number four 
we have long shot number one. Uh, this is actually the book I put on the list this week. And in this book, you have, um, first off, Art Adams' first professional work. You have, you have um, first appearance of Longshot, and uh, in this book, you have the uh, uh, the Mojo World inside the book. So this is important because into the Spider Verse number two for the teaser they had, you see Mojo, and it's promoting Mojo World. So why why not pick up this book? I mean, it's currently a ninety day. GPA average at a 9.8 is $239. The last sale was 462. But you can still pick up raw books for 20 bucks. Uh 35 and 60 is what I saw last on eBay as a raw near mint copy. So if if you're smart, I would pick it up. Yeah, I, I like it, Aaron. Um you know, I don't know what's going to happen with X-Men and MCU, but everything I've seen makes me think it's going to be heavily, heavily 90s influenced. And Longshot was a big, big player in that 90s run. Um, so this is something people could come chasing. I'd point out there is a newsstand version of this, um, which is also super appealing, something worth grabbing, I think, if you see it. But smart pick. Good job. I I've been to multiple shops where you won't see that on the wall. You won't see it in the back as you bins. But some shops will like group like mini series together into a, a few long boxes. Check those long boxes because I've seen that. I, I've got multiple copies of Long Shot Number One, and the reason why is because I pick them up in these bundles where they're they're in a, a long box just full of mini series. Like and and sometimes they're discounted because people don't buy out of there because they don't want to spend the whole you know forty fifty sixty dollars or whatever the whole mini series, but. Check those if you if you have a shop like that where they they put together like small mini series together. Sometimes you can find them in there. That's a pro tip right there from Jessup. There's a shop that I go to that is just that, and there's some golden books packaged in these things oh, yeah. for fifteen or twenty bucks. Good stuff, Jessup. For book number three, we have Star Wars High Republic Adventures number one. Uh, Andy had this pick. Nico's going to fill in for him. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Uh, if you're not watching the Keep It Thorough podcast, uh, please subscribe and uh, start to follow our brother, Andy Tomberlin, who is uh, doing work with that group. Uh, it's exceptional. Uh, also, he is the author of the Indie Spotlight series for comicbookinvest.com. Uh, he astutely observes that High Republic Adventures number one, the A cover, has all of the characters that matter uh, smack dab on the cover, and it's still selling for cover price. Uh, compared to the High Republic number one, this book seems like a steal. Much lower print run from IDW. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer. It's still on shelves everywhere, too. Like I, I went to three different shops today. Every one of those shops had five or more copies for cover price. And uh, I think he mentioned also there's a there's a cameo at the end of this one. And I think anyone who doesn't who, who just thinks this is a book and comic uh, effort by by Disney is is fooling themselves. Uh, if if they don't think that there's grander plans um, uh, on the horizon, so I think it's only a matter of time before we see. Uh, truly only a matter of time before we see a High Republic media. Don't know if it's streaming, don't know if it's movies, but there, there's no way it just stays in books and in, in prose novels and, and comics. And don't let the adventures in the title fool you. This, this doesn't really seem like a children's book if you've read it. Yeah, it's really good. And if you're going to be hunting for other covers for this, look for the 1 in 10. All right, for number two, we have uh, Star Wars Darth Vader number three, the second print. Jessup, I believe you have this one. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a second print. It's not as sought after as the first, the third or the fourth print. Uh, those are all priced out of what we're allowed to uh, really report on here. Um, if you have a marker on what you, you want to spend, you're not going to have uh, another chance to grab this book. If she gets optioned, 
or those droids get options. So you got triple zero, uh, BT one, and Doctor Afra. It's not gonna. This is your last chance to get this book under a hundred dollars. Um, nine eights are gonna cost you a little bit more, but you, if you're if you're thorough and you, when you in your search, or if you find this on a shelf or in the back issue bin, if you're if you're lucky enough to find it. Uh, this is your absolute last chance. Um, I, I think somebody told me that the print run on the second print was 12,000. I thought it was much higher. I, I, th that surprised me. If you want to get in, um, in on this book, this is really your best bet. And um, the Granov cover is, is simply stunning um, and a really, really smart pick uh, by our man, Jessup. And then you have three first appearances in this book, Dr. Afra, Triple Zero, BT1, and then uh, for GPA sales, Sato, the 90-day average for it is $253. Our last sale was $299. And on, for a raw sale on eBay, $66. Yeah, that, that's smart for a character what? like this. Everybody knows she's going to get her own show eventually and forget it at that point. It will be gone. All right. Let's move on to our number one book, which I think Nico is going to take the honors for covering for Andy. Yeah, so uh, Andy hit a home run with die number one. The Karen Gillan classic uh, is poised for television. Uh, that's been uh, rumored for, God, uh, what seems like years now. Um, but the reality is that with COVID-19, I think uh, those kind of plans were just uh, put on hiatus with a little pin. I, I don't think they've gone anywhere. Um, this is a book that some of the smartest minds in comics, like uh, our dear friend Matt DeVoe at Cover Price uh, and others have championed for a long time. Uh, the big takeaway is this. Uh, it used to be 100 plus uh, raw. Now it's on a, uh incredible dip you're looking at um, being able to snag a copy of this in high grade on eBay for around the $30 mark. Um, it makes sense uh, at that price point. Um, and who knows what the ceiling would be uh, if in fact there is live action uh, for this book. Uh, it's got a cult following and really does a good job of, of touching uh, the cross-section between the tabletop gaming community uh, and comics. Uh, plus, um, we're going to see a, a lot uh, of increased interest in Dungeons & Dragons like, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, narratives with the forthcoming Dungeons & Dragons live action show in the works. So great book, uh, great price, great pick. Uh, please go watch the Keep It Thorough podcast indie spotlight series andy bangs them with number one all right thank you for everyone for joining us uh catch our round table on thursday and i believe comic book women will be on tonight the girls and i are going to be hanging out with the stunning megan ashley she is the official face and model for the mystique comic book series so be sure to check us out 9 p.m eastern standard time see you later